Hi, my name is Jeff Belanger, and I want to say hello to my friends at the Old Town Trolley in St. Augustine, Florida. And I want to take just a couple minutes to tell you about something I did once that was really difficult. I want you to picture this. We're at about 18,000 feet in altitude on Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania on the eastern side of Africa. Three in the morning, and I can't breathe. It is so difficult to breathe. The air is so thin. Uh, I'm taking breaths as deep as I possibly can, and it's cold, really cold. I live up north. I'm used to the cold, but nothing like this. I can't breathe, and I'm freezing. I have on a balaclava, which covers my whole face, except for around my eyes. And that fabric is stopping some of the air from getting through, and I have to pull the fabric down in order to breathe. But then my face gets so cold, I have to put it back. And then I alternate between breathing and being warm. And I'm taking one step and then another. I have on a headlamp that lights up maybe three feet around me. And all I see is tan dirt and rocks and the feet of the climbers in front of me. We're going at a pace that is so slow. Pole pole is what they say in Swahili. It means slow. And our guides say it over and over again. It's almost like a mantra. Because they understand, they've done this a lot more than I have. You can't climb a mountain uh, in one leap. You can't run up a mountain. You have to save your energy. It's a long race. And so it's three in the morning and I'm trying my best to breathe. If you want to know what it's like, take one of those little stirry straws you get at the diner. You know, you stir your, toff your coffee or your tea. Uh, just breathe through that. And try to get in enough air. Now go for a jog, breathing through just that little straw and see how difficult it is. That's what it feels like right now. And about this time, I notice that uh, the voices, and I've always had this constant chatter in my head, this dialogue, replaying conversations I've had, uh, you know, things I'm thinking about, always, always going, they just stop and everything goes silent. And I take that as either a really good sign or a really bad sign. And I'm not sure if I can make it because this, the going is hard. The most difficult place I've ever been in physically but still, I feel like almost an automaton, one step and then another, trying to get up there. The summit is 19,341 feet, and there's still hours to go, and it is dark and it is cold. We've passed signs where people have died, marking, you know, in memory of so-and-so. And I think about, wow, turning back now would kill me to get this close to the goal and go back. But I know going on could also kill me. But still I do. And I figure at some point, it's out of my hands, right? I'm either gonna be able to do this or I'm not, but I'm just gonna take one more step and then another, because that's all I know how to do. And then around 4.30 in the morning, I turn around and I see just the faintest glow forever out there on the horizon behind me. And I realize the sun's coming. Five o'clock, it's a little bit lighter. And I can see just a sea of clouds, thousands of feet below us, right? I mean, the clouds are maybe around 10,000 feet. We're way above them. And I just keep pushing and pushing, silence in my head, just trying harder and harder to get up to this place, this place that the Maasai and the Chaga people who've lived around this mountain for thousands of years, they have a word for it, which means the house of God or where God dwells, because they believe only those that God deems worthy is allowed up there. And pretty soon it's about 6.15 in the morning and I can see the volcanic rim up ahead. And I know we're almost to a place called Stella Point. And I'm just breathing as deep as I possibly can and taking one more step and then another. And at 6.30, we get to Stella Point. And keep in mind, the summit's still another 500 vertical feet, another three quarters of a mile, another hour away. But I turn around and I see this sunrise, a sunrise that changes everything. I took a photo of it. I had this made into postcards. You're each getting one. That sunrise changed everything. The world had warmed up 10, 15 degrees. I didn't need my headlamp anymore. And I felt this amazing presence around me in that moment. And I knew, even though the summit is still another hour away, I knew I was gonna make it. Right then and there, I was deemed worthy. Two hours ago, I was almost out of hope. But in that moment, in that simple act of a sunrise, everything changed. I was able to see. I was able to feel a little bit of warmth and I had hope, hope, it's all I needed. And I made it, I made it to the top. I call this picture hope because I know 
no matter how bad my day gets, the sun is going to rise tomorrow. That sun, which has been coming up for millions and millions of years, since before people have even been around to see it, is going to rise tomorrow. We all have our challenges that we face. We all have mountains that we have to climb, whether they're literal or metaphoric. Every single day, we have those challenges. And some days, we're going to win, and it's going to feel great. And some days, we're not. We're going to feel defeated. But the only thing that matters is that we know the sun rises tomorrow, we get up, and we keep climbing. Because hope, hope will push us a long, long way. Thank you guys for having me at your meeting. Take care.